All right, guys. Best mustache I have ever seen. Bashar Kato here today. Thanks for coming out, man. Thanks for inviting me, brother. Yeah, I can't uh, can't deny it, dude. How long does it take to get that ready? You know, right now, after almost a decade of doing it, uh, probably about five minutes. Okay. Uh, but in the beginning, it took probably about a good 30, 45 minutes. You Damn. Know? Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Did you always have facial hair growing up? Um, yes and no. This actually came out of depression. Really? Um, yeah, after I uh, lost my business in 2015, I went into depression for about six months Damn. and uh, grew a big beard. Uh, as I was coming out of depression and kind of feeling good and, and getting into business again, I shaved the the, the beard and, and I saw there was something there. I'm like, all right, <laughs> let's keep this and see what happens. Yeah, I yeah. love it. So 2015, the fire happens, right? Yes. Walk me through that. Um, I always uh, wanted to be an entrepreneur. Uh, uh, you know, uh, admired my father because he was uh, he owned uh, the second largest factory of clothing in Iraq in the uh, 70s and 80s. Wow. Um, and um, in 2011, four years, five years after we migrated to America, because I'm originally from Iraq, um, we started our first uh, business in America. Two years after, I said, "Hey, I'm a 23 year old kid. I want to do things bigger." I got into my own uh, business, which was a restaurant. Uh, about three, four months into that, I realized that I didn't know what the hell I was doing uh, hmm. when it came to business. Um, about two years after, two and a half years after, April 15th or April 28th, 2015, um, I got a phone call at 5 p.m. from my bartender hmm. saying the kitchen is on fire. By the time I got back, the kitchen was torn up. Um, the issue is that I did not have insurance. Ooh. Lost everything I had invested in the business. Came out of with about one hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt. Damn. And uh, three months I got. Uh, three months after I got a DUI, and that's kind of when I hit rock bottom. After. Holy crap. Yeah. One hundred fifty k in debt. So you took out loans to have that restaurant. Uh, well, loans. Uh, you know, uh, uh, food purveyors that I had bought things from that I never uh, paid. Uh, you know, uh, um, uh, the IRS. Taxes, yeah. back taxes, all that kind of stuff. You know, just didn't know what I was doing in business. So not paying the right things at the right time and so on. And, and that just kept on accumulating. Mm. So six months of depression. What got you out of that? Realizing that I'm only 25 and that it's not the end of me, but it's that everything happens for a reason. Right. And understanding that there is always the next thing in life, regardless what it is you're doing. There is always more that you can do, and it's up to you what you want to do with the hardships that happen in your life. You either lean into them and take them as lessons and you know catapult your, your life to the next level, mm -hmm. or you can become a victim and cry about it and do nothing. Right. So that's technically what I used to to go to the next level, you know, mm. and get out of depression. Nice. Mm. So did you go to a conference or seminar or see someone on YouTube? Um, yes and no. It was honestly just kind of, you know, YouTube was was one, obviously, uh, one great resource. But um, it was more of a, um, here's this. A couple of months back, I got asked on a podcast. They said, what is one skill that anyone needs to master for them to have a great life? And mm. they were expecting marketing, sales, this, the other. And I said, the skill of mastering your mind mm. because oftentimes 80 percent of all the anxiety and everything that we feel is self-inflicted and it is whatever you know thoughts in our minds are not controlled they just come in our minds it's not something that we you know we uh, uh, uh kind of make happen but it is our decision what we want to do with these thoughts right and if you can't or don't know how to you know, maneuver through your thoughts, you will be in a rabbit hole that you can't get yourself out of. So honestly, it was just, you know, kind of the uh, the David Goggins in me that uh, that went to work and just really focused on my mind and all the, the positivity and, and so on mm. that um, got me out of it. And then, you know, I had mentors and so on as well. Yeah. I love Goggins, man. Yeah. That's a goat right there. He's awesome. How did you get that first mentor? Uh, first mentor, believe it or not, was uh, a movie uh, actor. Okay. Uh, so it was uh, a character uh, everyone probably knows, Rocky Balboa. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I grew up watching Rocky Balboa, although I'm, you know, I was born in 1990. Uh, my my favorite movie of all time is Rocky One, um, and uh, you know, in Rocky Four, Rocky Five, he's got a quote, a famous quote, where he says, "It's not about how hard you hit, but it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Mm. How much you can take and keep moving forward." That's how winning is done. Um, so it was really that kind of the underdog 
feel that I loved about it. And then from there, when I went online, you know, it was people like Grant Cardone, Gary V, and, 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 and others that I started listening to um, and getting, you know, uh, inspired by. Yeah. Um, and then when I got into the specific thing that I did was, uh, which was Amazon, it was my Amazon coaches and mentors that I, um, you know, that I uh, learned from. Mm. So when did you stumble across Amazon and the potential there? 2015, okay. right, right, um, right after my restaurant burned down. Wow. Yeah. So pretty quick after. Yes. Okay. By six, six to eight months after. Yeah. And yeah. that's FBA? Uh, yes, FBA private label. Got it. Yes. So you didn't have enough to buy inventory. So how did that work? I had a girlfriend at the time, mm -hmm. um, and uh, who helped me with uh, with some inventory, uh, in the concept of her credit card. <laughs> so my first uh, my first course was actually uh, uh, used, or I bought it with her credit card. Um, I was watching a video by Robert Kiyosaki. Yep, and he said. Don't say, I can't afford it. Instead, ask, how can I afford it? Mm. And as I started asking, how can I afford it? I started learning about the concept of OPM. And that's when I realized that all of our lives, we've been leveraging other people's money just in the wrong way. Mm. We, you know, credit cards, most people watching this probably have a credit card or know someone have a credit card. What do we use with it? What do we do with it? We go shopping. We go to the movies. We go to restaurants. What do we don't realize is this is other people's money. And instead of using it and leveraging it to buy consumables, we can buy assets, we can start a business, we can buy a course and invest in ourselves and, 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 and further our education and knowledge. Right. Um, so it was honestly OPM that, um, that helped me out of that. I borrowed money from family and friends. My girlfriend helped me out as well. Uh, buy my first couple of courses and uh, from there invested in uh, products and that's history. Nice, you could do a lot with OPM, man. Yes. And now there's 0% OPM. There is all kinds of OPM that um, that honestly anyone can get a hold of, um, I, regardless how old you are, regardless where you live. There are many things that you can do. Yeah, you just need a solid plan on how you're going to use it because some people can get OPM and then lose it. Correct. So you, you don't want that. One hundred percent. Yeah, because then you're double loss, right? Yes. You owe two people money. Yes. But uh, there's there's really good ways to use it, man. Absolutely, and so especially with the power of the internet. There are many things that you can research literally at your fingertips in minutes. Absolutely. Yes. So you got through that tough time and now you're killing it with Amazon, right? Doing millions. Yes. That's impressive. How yes. long did that take to scale? Um, in 20, end of 2015 is when I got into Amazon. Uh, by 20, so 2018 was my first uh, seven figure year. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, now we do a few million dollars a year uh, with Amazon. 80% um, of my time, however, is spent on teaching people this skill rather than doing the skill. I'm still an Amazon investor. I'm invested in three different uh, Amazon businesses. Mm. Um, but what I realized in 2019, 2020 is that I wasn't the only one in that situation. I had a group of friends who were taught that in order for you to live a good life, you need to go to school, get a degree, get a job, which is great. But then I realized that there are other opportunities. There are a lot of missed opportunities because there is no awareness um, which was things like selling on Amazon. Mm. Um, and since then, I've been very passionate about sharing the missed opportunities with people and showing them that, yes, you can go to school. Yes, you can spend you know, fifty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 to get a degree. Um, or you can also acquire another skill in months instead of years and turn it into, into income. Um, and you can do it from anywhere in the world. Right. You know? Um, so that's what I'm passionate about right now. Nice. Um, I used to watch a course a week growing up when I was broke in college. That's awesome. The fa my favorite course ever was Sam Ovens. I saw that was you my got my first mentor. Oh yeah. When I went online uh, to to do consulting. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I saw you got to interview him. Yeah. So I want to ask what you what you learned from him. What some of your takeaways were. So in 2019 is when I got into uh, with Sam Ovens um, and started learning from him up until 2022 when he um, had his Quantum Mastermind. Um, I became the, the the first you know the largest investor in school uh, up until Harmozy you know kind of took away that title nice. from me. Uh, well, a that's few good months for ago. you though. One hundred percent, he tripled my investment, so that's <laughs> great. Um, the biggest thing that I learned from him is this: there is never a lack of ideas. Is just which idea are you going to actually focus on? Mm. Because the whole notion of Seven streams of income to become a millionaire is a myth, and it's just a buzz thing that people talk about. 
I, you know, my phone is filled with seven, eight, and nine figure entrepreneurs. I want to say probably about ninety nine point nine percent of them did it with focusing on one thing. Wow. One, just one company, one product, one whatever, right? And got them to that level. And so, his advice was, there is many things you can do. You just got to pick one, and you got to go all in. Mm. And that's technically what I've done over the last decade. I love that. Yeah, because you see those articles about the seven things of income, and yes. you feel pressure to diversify. Yes. But then that distracts time from your main fo focus. Yeah, because he, there's, a, there's a famous drawing that he did uh, when I first joined his, his uh, program. He, he drew two circles, and then one of them had one line going all the way up, and the other one had six, seven lines, and they were all like one inch you know, yeah. long. And in the, in the middle, he put energy. And in the middle of that, he put you, right? And technically, what he was trying to explain is that, look, you only have so much bandwidth. You only have so much time. You only have so much energy. If you put it all in one thing, you can take this one thing very far. If you put it on seven different things, you're going to probably half-ass all seven, mm. right? So it's like, which is the one thing that drives you the most? Which is the one thing that gets you out of bed every single morning? Focus on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For me, that's podcasting right now. That's amazing, man. But in the past, it was crypto, and that's where I made my money because I focused all in on crypto. 100%. And a lot of it's timing, too. That's awesome. Yeah, because if you did Amazon now, it's probably a lot harder. Um. Yes and no. Yes and no. Um. There is a lot more sellers, 100% today, but there are a lot more buyers. When I first got uh, started on Amazon in 2015, there was uh, 275 million shoppers on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Today, there's over 500 million. Damn. So it doubled almost. Yeah. And Amazon accounts for over 56% of all online sales. Wow. Right? That's it crazy. Is, it's, it's changed. It's not the same. But there is a lot more potential today than there was ever with Amazon. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And how much <laughs> would you say people need on average to start right now? At least 10 to 20,000. Okay. Yeah. It's not to do what, I'm, what I do, which is private label, which is building our own brand, our own asset. You could do things like arbitrage. You can do things like wholesaling, and you'll need a lot less money, maybe $5,000 or so. But to build a real asset, a real business, business you can leverage to, uh, you know, raise money, a business you can, you know, uh, exit, which is what we've done with a lot of our brands, uh, uh, a business that is your own, at least ten to twenty thousand dollars. Nice. Yeah. Did you get to talk to Hormozzi during the school stuff? I did. I did actually. Um, uh, he has a uh, uh, monthly workshops here in Vegas that he does, and uh, I um, I attended actually last month. Oh, and, nice. and, and Was there? It was a good time. Cool. Yeah. What do you, What do you take away from that? Um, a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> let's see. As a as a CEO, as an entrepreneur, we are understanding that we are in the who business and not the how business. Mm. Meaning, normally when we want to do something. Immediately, what we do is, let me figure out how to do it. Instead, ask, who do I know that can teach me how to do it or do it for me, right? And that is one cycle that I've gotten stuck in for a long period of time. Now, and even before I started my businesses, I've launched nine businesses. The first seven failed. Mm. And when I look back at the first seven, the biggest common denominator was the fact that I wanted to figure it out by myself. Instead of asking who's done it before, because regardless what it is you're trying to do, someone else has done it before you. Figuring out who's done it, teach me how to do it, and then go do it. Or hiring someone to do it. You know, you've mm. got your team, you've got people around you, right? Obviously, you're not doing all the stuff. You're doing the interviewing and stuff like that. But you ask yourself... Who can help me do the producing? Who can help me do this thing? Who can help me do that thing? And you surrounded yourself with A players. Right. So understanding that you're not in the how business, but the who business, um, that's the biggest takeaway. And then number two, um, understanding that there are always a lot of quote unquote problems that we can focus on or we can move along at any given time, but asking ourselves, which is the biggest problem in our business or in our life or whatever it is we're doing right now that we need to focus on right now and then keeping the focus to only three to five things at any given time. It goes back kind of to the Sam Ovens concept of focus, right? Yeah. You've only got limited energy, limited time, limited effort. The more you focus it on one, two, three things, the better you're going to be able to generate a better result. Yep. Yeah, I love what he did with school because he did not... He had a podcast at the time which he totally trashed yes. and then he was doing other stuff but he totally put it to the side for school and now it's a nine-figure company right it is yes crazy and there's people on there making a full-time living now 100 percent. 
I think he's really revolutionized the community aspect of learning. He definitely has. And and he was um, ahead of time uh, when it came to, you know, seeing what's out there and, and being able to kind of predict the market and predict the, the future. Yeah. 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 Consulting.com. Those were the days, man. Yeah, man. Those courses were legendary. Yes. Really reshaped my mindset. Absolutely. Yeah. Shout out to Sam. He's yes. probably not even watching this, but <laughs> he's so focused on school. Absolutely. <laughs> what else are you working on right now? Um, so the next five years is to take our university, BJK University, and make it into a, um, a platform that provides people different skills that they can turn into income within months and not years. Mm. Anyone around the planet, 8 billion people, every single human, in their mind, they're thinking at some point in their life, how can I live a better life? And up until now, in my opinion, the traditional school system has had a monopoly at providing a better life. Right. Over the last 10, 15 years, there has been a completely different a shift away from that. And that is in, you know, things like consulting.com, mm -hmm. where you can take your skill and turn it into income in, in you know, in, in literally in less than a year, right? Yeah. And maybe a, a couple months. And so our mission here at BJK University is to impact a million lives uh, by disrupting the education system. And we want to provide our clients with skills they can turn into, uh, turn into income within months and not years. Mm. And so starting 2025 and beyond, we're going to be providing them different skills, preferably online, preferably they can do from anywhere in the world, uh, and preferably with very low investment, right? Because again, you go to school, you're expected to study for two, three, four, five years, spend ten to $50,000 per year, get a degree that hopefully can get you a job that can hopefully, you, you won't get fired from one day, right? We're here, we'll, we'll technically be giving you the, um, we'll be giving you the power, you'll be taking power back and you'll be taking control back of your fate because these skills that you acquire, even if you're hired by a company that lets you go, you can take that same skill and apply it somewhere else and somewhere else and somewhere else, yep. especially with this digital age. Yeah. Mm. Did you mix family and business? Do you believe in keeping those separate or did you integrate your family? Um, I, the first business that I had in America or that I ever had or got involved with uh, was a family business. The dynamic of my family did not work out. Mm. Um, I have seen other dynamics where it has worked out that unfortunately did not work out for me. I intentionally make it a point to not hire family. Wow. Um, I My wife worked with us when we were five people, and then I fired her and put her on a salary. You fired plus her? Some, yeah. <laughs> I, I fired her, but put her on a salary with some prerequisites that she receives the salary. Okay. Um, she's a, a uh, uh, you know, she's she's retired. I call her my uh, uh, my CCO, <laughs> my chief cheerleading officer. Um, but this was something else that I learned from Sam as well. He said, you've got two lives. Only one of them can be chaotic at any given time. You're professional and you're personal. If you want to become a, a high-level entrepreneur and accomplish great things, your home life needs to be settled. Mm. Cannot have drama. And that's what my wife provides for me. Outside of that, you know, my brother, uh, my cousins, um, many people have applied and tried to work with me, and I've just said no. Damn. Yeah, I. Um, the position that I don't want to be in is an executive or a manager in my company keeping a family member longer than they should have or not, um, you know, not holding them accountable to the level right. that I expect them to because they're related to me. Nepotism, right? And even if you tell them not to, they'll still do it subconsciously. Right. Yeah, it's tough mixing the two. Even friendships. Do you hire friends at all? Not at all. Wow. Yeah, no one in my company is my friend or my 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 uh, my family. Obviously, my team has become my friends and 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 my family, my chosen family. But they're not people that I grew up with. They're not people that I you know that I uh, 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 um, uh, that I'm blood related to or any of that. You know. Yeah, this is a good conversation for me because I'm on my my fifth assistant now, and I used to think it was them, right? But the thing is, I get a personal relationship with people. Mm. So I start being lenient. So I, I realized it was actually me. I was giving my assistants too much freedom. And that was affecting the relationship. Have you read How to Be a Great Boss? No, I need to. I would highly recommend it. Short book, about 150, 180 pages by Gina Wickman, the founder of EOS. Okay. Um, up until about seven months ago, I thought I, I'm not a manager. 
I don't hold people accountable. They're just not me. I'm a visionary. I'm the nice guy. I'm this, I'm that. And I hired a COO, yeah. and I pretty much handed the company over to her. And I said, I'm going to be here and like build a company, blah, blah, blah. Four months later, I realized that she's building a different company than the one that I handed over. And it wasn't because she was a bad person. It's just because I said, go lead the company. And she started leading it her way. And it wasn't the way that helped recruit the great people that I recruited. They got sold because I sold them into our vision. Mm. And she's a, she has different personality. And I started seeing people get upset and people leave. And then when I took back the reins, I realized that there are three things that the book talks about. Leadership, management, accountability. Doesn't matter who you are. You need to know how to lead, how to manage, how to hold people accountable. And the book gives you a very simple system to follow Regardless if you're a nice guy, regardless if you're a tyrant, regardless of your leadership style, it actually says your leadership style does not need to change for you to hold people accountable and to set the right expectation, mm. right? Um, so I'm glad that you realize it's not them, it's me, because it all starts with us. It's true, yeah. It took me a while to realize, though. I think a lot of people are like that as bosses, though. They, they think it's their employees, but it's partially their own fault, too. I think it's 99.9% .9 ourselves. Wow. Yeah. Um, the thing is... Here's the thing. Yes, you can hire a B player and you can hire an A player and the A player can produce, you know, tons more than the B player. But the A player also will leave your organization if you don't set the right standards in your company. Mm. And if you don't hold everyone else accountable to a certain level that they expect to be in an environment to, to work in. Right? right. And so if you don't set the right conditions because uh, there is a quote by, I think it's Winston Churchill. Um, I might be uh, misquoting it. It said, a, a, a great, no, actually it was uh, Roosevelt. He says that uh, a, a great leader is one who creates the right environment, and I'm rephrasing here, creates the right environment, finds the right people, put them in the right seats, and then is uh, 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 self-constrained enough to get the fuck out of their way <laughs> and kind of let them do their thing, Yeah. right? And so it all starts with you as a leader. And I do believe it's 99.9% .9 dependent on us as leaders. That's cool. I'm going to check that book out on Audible when I get home. Thank yes. you. Uh, do you incorporate any spirituality into your business? Um, I do. In fact, almost two years ago now, I um, had a seizure out of nowhere. Whoa. And, um, you know, uh, I woke up in the hospital not realizing what's going on. It was my best year financially. My marriage was at uh, the best place. I had more money in the bank that I could, you know, think what to do with. Um, my company was growing. Everything was great. Yeah. And I was very, I thought I was eating very healthy. And uh, for the event to happen when it did, it just knocked me off my, you know, off my feet. And um, for about three months, well, the first, the first three weeks, I would only sleep two hours per day. Um, I would be having anxiety and panic attack mm. like I've never had in the past. Uh, in fact, this morning, you know, I was sitting in the office here. I was kind of having a little bit of a, you know, anxiety that I've never felt before. Wow. And um, and I went into kind of a spiritual journey. Uh, Tony Robbins was a big, uh, uh, you know, uh, a big uh, component of that. I mm -hmm. got very involved with his teachings, and um, and so you know, previous to that, my number one uh, definition of success was financial success. Yeah. And right now I've got three pillars, and that's uh, uh, you know obviously wealth, but also relationships and health and wellness, and so we integrate a lot of that inside of our programs. So not only do we teach people about um, you know about how to, you know how to become an entrepreneur and sell on Amazon and stuff like that, we have a mindset trainer that mm. works with our coaches uh, with our students nice. uh, on a uh, quarterly basis uh, to help them you know uh, uh, relieve uh, unlimiting beliefs and so on. Uh, we're also in our future. We want to create retreats. Um, that are uh, uh, spiritual, you know, based on spirituality and, mm. and and focus on spirituality and health and wellness and so far, because I do believe that you could have millions and billions of dollars in the bank and you could be absolutely miserable. And for me, that's not successful. Right. You know, if and and, and I, I you know whether if you get offended right for what I'm going to say or not, that's that's to you, not not for me. <laughs> but um, if you're overweight and you've got a bunch of money in the bank, I don't consider you successful. Mm. You know. Um, if you, uh, have a bunch of money in the bank, but, uh, you're, you know, you don't have a good relationship with your, with your husband or wife or your children, I don't consider you successful, right? Success is having, you know, all areas of life figured out, yep. right? At a certain level that make you feel fulfilled, not what society deems 
successful. Yeah. You don't need to be a millionaire to be successful. You could be, uh, you know, uh, making good money and living a good life and have a great relationship with your with your kids and your your family and everybody else. And if for you you're financially stable, that's great. For you, in my eyes, you are successful. Yeah. Right. I would rather have that than a multimillionaire or billionaire that's got you know seven marriages and and five kids that he doesn't talk to and mm. so far you know agreed for me that's not successful i agree i used to think it was just financial too but after a few million you realize there's a lot more to success yes than just money absolutely dude it's been fun anything you want to close off with or promote um you know promote i would just say you know if uh, if you're interested in um in uh again changing your life without needing to go to school and and spend years Check us out. Go to uh, you know, go to my Instagram page, Bashar J Ketu, um, on Instagram. Follow me there. Uh, check out our stuff. And um, yeah, that's cool. that's really it. We'll link it below, man. Thanks yeah, for coming on. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. watching, guys. See you tomorrow.